we're recording. <laughs> People will be like, I thought you said it. Actually, it is about an hour from when I said T minus an hour. Look at me actually be on time, kind of. <laughs> kind of. I like that. On time, kind of. On time, kind of. It's all relative. You know, it's just like. Let's not get all linear with time now. It's, a men it's like a human construct. Time. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious uh, it's like that song just one of them days that a girl goes through <laughs> what am I oh, wait, <laughs> recording <laughs> all right we're not we're not live yet though um uh so, you are a hot mess what do you mean? I'm amazing. This is just me like being happy and silly. Oh, hot mess to me is good. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Oh, do you have your Facebook up? Shall we share it to your page? Yeah, you can do that. Thank you. Thank you for your consent. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. So much fun. Today is going to be a fun day for it interviewing. It is. It's Tuesday. Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? I, I keep losing track of the days. Um, we're live now. <laughs> I was going to say good morning, everyone, but it might be a good morning in your frame of the world, wherever you might be watching from. I am Elicia Bus, host of Horsepower Empowerment Through Connection, and I have the great honor of getting to interview Laura Newman today from Rogersville, Missouri. That's what they call it back there. Missouri. For the rest of us, but those of them that like live in Missouri, it's Missouri, Missouri. Um, so, Lori, we laugh about this like literally every time you talk. It's really quite entertaining to me. It's like that joke that you always tell with your family, like when you're a kid, and it just continues on through our whole life. Like my, me and my dad, we talk about um, why didn't the dog carry any change? Because he didn't have any pockets. Oh, he didn't have his pants on. Okay. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, so, <laughs> oh, my, it's doing crazy things. So Laura, for those of you who do not know Laura, Laura is a U.S. Army veteran. She's an author. She's a speaker. She's a business performance coach. She has written the book, um, gosh, let's see, 90 Days on the Path to Success um, for Building Health, Wealth, and abundance, um, which I think is pretty cool because I don't know if anybody here is uh, tempted to, <laughs> I was going to say read a book, but that too, but I actually want to write a book. Um, I'm in a really funny mood today, so you guys get an extra special sort of. <laughs> um, she is also <laughs> the founder of Horse Business Whisper.com and here to succeed performance coaching. Um, Laura, thank you so much for being here with us. Today. My pleasure. My pleasure. Um, goodness gracious, where should we even start? Um, can you tell our, I know so many, so many directions that we could go here. Can you tell our audience to begin with just a little bit about what you do with the horses? I know that we told people that we would have horses today, but it's really windy there. So I'm yes. sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that we don't have horses on. But and I have some horses that are camera hogs. It would have been great, but the wind, I'm afraid you, nobody would hear me. It would just be wind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, um, really, there, there's been a little bit of a journey for me in bringing the horses about. And I began coaching back in 2000 as a life coach and um, enrolled in college. I, I went to Coach U and graduated from their program. And I really wanted to have a, a deeper understanding of human behavior. So I enrolled in uh, college. I went back to college. My first degree was in veterinary technology. I ran a veterinary hospital for about four and a half years down in Southwest Louisiana. I worked with a lot of racetrack horses in that time frame. But moving forward from that, I, I did a, a career in uh, sales and marketing, figured out I was really good at that. But I hired a coach when I was in sales and marketing, and she always pulled me forward and, you know, just pushed me off the cliff each time. And it worked because I was always recruited. I never once went looking for a job. 
So um, come to about 2000, I woke up one day and said, I want to be her. I wanted to do the coaching. So I enrolled in Coach U, graduated from there, and then really wanted to understand human behavior, took a bachelor's in uh, psychology. I didn't realize at that point, though, that really a bachelor's in psychology is just theory. There's no application. So one of my professors talked me into going on to being a counselor. So I took a master's in counseling, and I maintained my license as a licensed professional counselor. And as I was making that transition between life coaching and counseling, I figured out, it wasn't juicing me. <laughs> it's it just like, wasn't eh, not quite for me. Yeah, it was kind of like a wah, wah, wah. And it, I'm so glad that there are counselors and therapists out there. I, it's just that I, my personality isn't geared for that. So I dropped back. I was starting to look at how I could incorporate forces into my work at that point. And um, a, a friend of mine called. I was having actually my clients sit and do observation, you know, like communication processes. Yeah. with the horses at that point. So I was really trying to feel my way through it and figure it out. And um, at that point, I decided I really wanted to get into business coaching. So I made the shift. And that was, a you know, if you want to call it an obstacle or a challenge, that was a challenge for me because it was like starting over. I had to go back. I took a lot more training as a business coach. And um, so not only was there the training, I'm, I mean, you talk about 180 in your niche. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Speaking of which, so I've noticed that a lot of people, um, they say they get, feel like that whole sort of imposter syndrome that comes up when you go into something that's new. Did you have any of that that came up for you when you first started? I did. And when I made that pivot, I was adding the horses in. I had taken the training then to incorporate horses into my work. Right. And there wasn't a lot of support for um, adding horses at that point. I mean, we're talking, or I wasn't aware of it anyway, early 2000s. So, you know, doing the coaching with the horses, um, it was a huge challenge because nobody was doing that in my area. Right. So, <laughs> that would be Missouri. Missouri, God, I'm so sorry. Um, I'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, so there was that challenge. There was that imposter syndrome because, you know, although it juiced me, I'm, you know, my jam is the psychology of money and business. Yeah. And um, I would get into that, that, you know, that conundrum of, oh, is it good enough? Am I good enough? You know? Yeah. That kind of thing. And, and you can be really good at what you do, but if you're afraid to put it out there, then, you know, it kind of falls flat. How did you assign value? I know a lot of people in the horse industry really struggle with like what to charge, right? It ends mm -hmm. up being more like a hobby than a business. So what would, how did you overcome that sort of situation? And then also what would be some of your recommendations for people that are out there that are struggling with that? Wow. And, and that's really a great question. Um, you know, value-based pricing is what I do and what I teach at Horse Business Whisperer. And, um, I had to, you know, learn all of this stuff. I had to figure a lot out, but before I even began figuring it out, because I had been so strong in sales and marketing in a previous career, I transposed that over. So I was able to get traction because I knew how to sell, right. but I was still struggling with that mindset, that self-valuing piece of, is this good enough? Oh my God, can I really help business owners and entrepreneurs? So, um, what really opened my eyes was after I began working with them and I went through the selling, you know, what I teach in my sales conversations or money conversations. Right. When you look at what that problem is costing that entrepreneur, that business owner, yeah. it's huge. It is not uncommon for me to talk to an entrepreneur and they've got a seven figure money leak and they're very willing to pay to stop that leak. <laughs> right. When you're dealing with like the corporate world. <laughs> So, you know, there was a lot of being scared to death and just do it anyway. Um, you know, and in the military, there was, I was already preconditioned for that. There was a lot of scared to do it, but do it anyway. And uh, mostly out of fear of getting a rear end chewed because, you know, there was always a sergeant <laughs> behind you ready to chew it if you didn't do it right. So, right. <laughs> you know, I mean, after that experience, everything else was pretty small potatoes, but. Um, just like, bye, you guys worry too much. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I still at that point had a lot of that mind chatter going. Right. Worrying about what people think. 
Yeah, and so it's about, my advice to others out there is, is about um, finding out what it's costing your prospective client to not hire you and solve the problem. Right. And then the value comes in there. I know we've talked before about how we value our horses as team members instead mm -hmm. of just looking at like, oh, the industry is really expensive, right? But do you think about it being expensive when you have employees? Because right. a certain that's amount exactly. of taxes we have to pay on top of that um, as business owners. And then when you think about what a horse costs and versus what you're paying an employee every month, like I'm betting that the horse is probably going to cost less than the employee does, right? In yes, general. yes, and they're more of a tax advantage as well. Right. I, I view my horses as part of the team, just like my wranglers, my equine specialists, um, other, you know, the psychologist on my team, the organizational development person on my team. I, the horses are equal to them. However, the horses are more of a, a tax write-off because you pay them and it's tax deductible. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're for profit, it's not just nonprofit. It's really the way it well, works. And you said, you said a key word, cost. And I don't view them as a cost. I view them as an investment because it was like I was uh, talking in a class earlier today. When I am with a client and they're stuck, and you know, the thing about experiential learning or the experiential process is it's far more powerful than didactic. You know, gosh, I cut my teeth in coaching uh, with, on the phone, talking, that talk, back and forth, didactic. Now, when my clients are stuck and they're still stuck with the didactic, I just put them out with the horses, throw in a few questions, and the horses get them unstuck the magic of working with horses the beauty yes. of that um and then you're trained in e and egala since we're going into like the processing a little bit of like mm -hmm. helping people to get unstuck can you talk to us a little a bit about those two different models of working with horses yeah you know uh both models involve more than just you you know in egala it's uh, a mental health professional and an equine specialist and um you know, I've got a lot of colleagues doing equine assisted psychotherapy. Um, I do not offer therapy anymore or counseling. I quit offering counseling about a decade ago. Now I keep up on my continuing education. I think it's important um, as a coach because, um, you know, I still come across clients that something has happened and they need they need some counseling along with the coaching. Right, like and being so triggered by something in the middle of it and that allows you to stay within, like it expanded beyond your scope of practice for life coaching. But since you have a licensed healthcare practitioner, you know, certification that you're able to then go into that next layer with them when they're triggered. Well, I, I don't really pursue that. That would be a little unethical. I generally refer that out. Oh, okay to one of my colleagues. So it works beautifully. Um, the, the thing about in um, E3A, we don't have to have a mental health professional and it's really a great framework for coaches and consultants because you can take that framework and use that as your main form of processing with your clients or coaching rather uh -huh. and, and moving them through your program. And it makes a wonderful um, additional a, you know, um, way of working with your clients in addition to any programs you might already have in place. And I know there are a lot of people that have transitioned out of corporate and they want to get into a level of coaching or using horses. And so it's a perfect uh, framework for them to work with clients and consult. Nice. So um, can you talk a little, a little bit more deeply about E3A? Like what does E3A stand for? And um like how, what the framework looks like a little bit more, like giving us an example. Sure, sure. So it stands for equine experiential education. And, you know, basically you can take this, um, this model into corporate. Uh, I use it with entrepreneurs and, and business owners. And you just have to have, you know, some right, you don't have to, but have more than one, but we have a Wrangler, at least one with us. Mm -hmm. And of course, horses, you know, you have your whole team there and your clients 
And basically it's like uh, you would do as a coach, you're, you know, you know why you're there, whether it's team building or leadership development. And we utilize props uh, to set up exercises. You know, we may have ropes, cones, buckets, and uh, set up exercises to work with our clients, either uh, free form or, you know, like a structured exercise for team building, you know, giving them an objective to hit. Right. And so then after um, they get the opportunity to interact with the horses, then we can come back to the drawing board, as it were, you know, the whiteboard. I love whiteboards. Oh my goodness. You they're, know, they're fantastic. Oh man. After we interact with the horses, we come back to the whiteboard and we just, you know, break that thing down. What happened out there? Why did that happen? <laughs> Now, do you have any horses that try and grab the markers and write on the whiteboard themselves? Not yet. But <laughs> it's never too late. I'm okay. waiting for that moment. It's like the elephant that paints, right? The elephant that paints itself. I feel like if you haven't seen that video, you should just watch it because it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so for that structure, how does the organization for E3A help support the different people that are certified by that body? Oh, you froze up. It broke up. Could you repeat the question? Yeah, no problem. So how does the E3A organization as a body support the people that are certified underneath it? Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, there's um, a networking uh, meeting that happens regularly. They offer, uh, you know, continuing education classes, if you will. It's very a very collaborative culture. You know, we have heart math professionals. We oh, have, okay. I know, right? It's we have okay. coaching strengths professionals. We have life coaches, business coaches of all walks. So everybody brings their area of expertise, their unique brilliance forward. And we just share that. Um, they have provided us a platform where they feature a different professional periodically, um, like the uh, owners of Steadfast Deeds, the Mustang Sanctuary we're on. And nice. they shared with us how they're helping with clients you know, break through and grow and how they're helping their community. So, you know, it's just, like I said, very collaborative. Everybody shares their expertise. And the, the thing about it is they often bring forward, um, you know, how to benefit the horse. How can we, as a collective, help bring horses forward better? How can we improve their lives in, in their world now? I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and for EGALA, what does EGALA stand for and how do they support their body? And Yeah, yeah, it's Equine Assisted Growth and Learning Association. And they too have uh, calls where they bring forward a lot of information. It, they have wonderful resources and support for the uh, mental health professionals and the equine specialists. So, you know, they too support, especially coming through COVID, uh, both organizations were very supportive with finding alternative ways to bring the horses forward and you know help the practitioners out. Nice, and then Egala always requires that you have a mental health practitioner, correct? And then an equine specialist, um, and then you right. have your horses in partnership. Right, so. yeah, you have to have a licensed mental health professional in the arena or it's not you know the Egala model. Um, and the equine specialist has to have so much um, Horse experience and training with horses. So, and I asked. You remember, I forget how it, many hours it was. I feel like it was rather substantial. It it, it is, and I I don't quote me. I can't remember. I just we'll remember just have to that look it up, I, folks. It's all over their website. I promise. <laughs> I serve in both capacities, you know, with my experience. So, you know, I'm able to dance on either side of the fence. No, that's nice. Yeah. Um, have you dabbled in any other areas for workshops? For different models uh, of working with the horses? Um, no, I have not, and I look forward to that. Katie and I um, are leading a group to the Pyrenees Mountains next fall in France. Which will be amazing, and, and I'm really hoping to go on that because that just sounds incredible. <laughs> so, it'll be done by then, everybody. It'll just it'll be done. We'll all get to go to the Pyrenees Mountains. Sounds amazing. I'm totally coming yeah, back with so, a giant fluffy white puppy from the Pyrenees Mountains. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> well, you know, when you bring people together, you're going to get people from different walks. So we're looking forward to that because when we get over there, you know, everybody gets to share their expertise and, you know, we get to experience some of the other uh, paths, if you will, in working with horses. Now, in the horses themselves, I Sorry, have... my parent's dog is barking. She's very upset at the thought that I might bring another dog into the house. She's like, this is terrible. Oh. I... <laughs> 
Sorry, I apologize for interrupting. Go on. No worries, no worries. So in working with the horses though, I've um, done clinics in uh, with Pat Pirelli and his trainers, uh, Buck Braneman. I thought I um, would really enjoy roping, but my shoulder did not enjoy uh, big loop roping, but it was a lot you, of fun. You just need a better massage therapist. I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course, um, Tim Brock here in Missouri, uh, does a lot of the, uh, Mustang makeovers and thoroughbred training, you know, rescues thoroughbreds and does training. So I, I take a lot of, um, instruction from him nice. on my communication process, because as you already know, if you want to know how good of a leader you are or how lousy of a communicator you are, go spend time with your horse. <laughs> You're just so honest. Way too honest. I love about them. They're just, they're really good at putting you in your place. Right. right. But in the nicest way possible. Mm -hmm. Um, so I like to talk to people about emotional regulation. Like how do you find emotional, the, the difference between um, people coming into the arena in a dysregulated fashion versus a calm and regulated place when they're engaging with the horses? Yeah, you know, it's funny. After they get past, particularly people that aren't used to being with horses or maybe they've never been with horses, um, it, it's a wonderful coaching opportunity, particularly if, if they're a little hesitant or a lot hesitant about getting yeah. in that arena. And we do keep minis on, on the staff to ease those who are afraid into crossing. Yeah, and they're cute. Um, but you know, when you look at what you do with that fear and what you do with that dysregulation, we can help them then calm down. You know, and there's science behind that where, you know, we know that we can help their cortisol level, that stress hormone come down and help that oxytocin level come up, the feel-good hormone. So, you know, there's a lot of um, experience and research out there. I know Liz Letson at Eagle Vista Ranch has done a lot of research in this area. Nice, um, can't wait to interview her. That's gonna be amazing. I know, and then, and she is, she's awesome. Um, another article that I've re read on um, this very thing is about trees. When people get around trees, they tend to calm down and regenerate you know, fill that cup up. Crazy. So, you know, I figure we're giving them a dub, double whammy. We've, we've got them around horses and we've got them around trees. Yes. Unless you're in the desert and then they're just cacti. Although, do they still fall in the category of trees or are they just like succulents? I don't know where that is. I, I need to, where's my, where are my botanists? Where are my, yeah. why is no one watching right now? I need a botanist watching. Anybody have my question answered? <laughs> Failing me right now, you guys. Ugh. <laughs> but you know that's a good point that you bring up because we do take a holistic leadership approach meaning it's about taking leadership of this first you know before we can take leadership in our dynamics like time money energy our energy and in our environments especially taking leadership with your team or other people this has to be you know um, mastered first the thinking performance, the emotional regulation. So yes, that is the place we usually start with our clients is helping them really balance that out, get this calm, cool, collected and balanced so that they can co-create coordinated movement, which is what leadership is all about. Absolutely. I mean, if you don't have self-awareness, it makes it a lot more difficult to have awareness of where anybody else is coming from in a healthy space. <laughs> yeah. How can you recognize out there, but not in here? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and the thing is, the horses are so masterful at helping, you know, at showing people the way, Yeah, you know, finding that peace and finding that communication process to get the job done. You know, it's, it's just so many, so many business owners that we've seen leave a different person and maintain that way and, and get huge results as, as a result of the work they've done here. But, you know, I think too, with all of the new coaching coming forward, the new content coming forward, along with the horses, I really, really look forward to, you know, the years to come and what we're doing because the horses are the most powerful transformational beings on the planet. And so when you combine that with uh, an already robust and strong program, it is a powerhouse. 
No, that's beautiful. Speaking of that, can you talk to us about some of the profound stories that um, you've witnessed, gotten to be a part of with horses? Yeah, you know, we've had clients come through that um, were stuck in business, and then we discovered that, or they rather, they discovered that they really needed to address a drinking problem. Oh, wow. And gotten help, and it has profoundly shifted the foundation of their life, and they came for business coaching. It's stuff like that. And, you know, on the lighter note, though, I think the funnest story I've got is um, about the business owner that came from Little Rock and was setting up his business model with our props. He took a piece of paper and he wrote team representing his employees. And as he was laying his employees into the business model, he turned around to Tim and I and said, I am so tired of putting all this time, money, and energy into new employees just to have my competition swipe them away. And I'm not kidding. I'm telling you the truth. My new horse walked up slowly, and he stood there and watched him, picked up the employees, crumpled the employees into his mouth, and swallowed and walked away. And the client turns around and says, see? See what I mean? That's so now, funny. Alicia, you can't train a horse to do that. It was you can. beautiful. But I will tell you, the bottom line on that was a, an employee retention program was born that day with that horse. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Who would have thought that that would have been facilitated in such a fashion? Yeah. Uh, how do you feel? Like, have you noticed some really powerful changes in people's relationships to one another in the work that you've done? Like the yeah, you know, effect? Right. And you know, I talk about the ripple effect a lot and you, your business is not separate from your life, from who you are. Really your business is a, a, a reflection, you know, of you. And that's why promoting marketing sales can be a challenge for so many of us. And that being said, when I'm working with someone on the business level, the personal stuff's going to come up. I mean, that's like me saying, you know, Alicia, we're going to talk about your headache, but we're not going to address the footache that you've got. You know, it, it, it's, that, that's just not going to happen. So, you know, business owners, they may have, um, you know, one comes to mind where her husband had suddenly died a heart attack. His business fell back on her and she was overloaded. She was grieving, overwhelmed. You know, it was just mayhem for her. She said she doesn't really remember the first meeting with me. And so we were able to work with her and the horses to help her get that business lined out. And I've got, I had a counselor get involved for the grieving. And so we worked side by side with her and she was able to get through that in, in a balanced way. She found a buyer, you know, held her life together, but she was having to come apart. Divorce does not have to tank the business either. You know, we've worked with business owners that we're going through the rocky road of divorce. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of life situations, a lot of transitions, COVID-19. I mean, boom, there's another big change that can throw a business owner off balance in all areas. So the horses are really masterful at helping us with that. And I'm always real quick to reach out to other professionals and colleagues for help. Which is so great. It's, I think it's really important to be humble and all us all of us to recognize that we don't know everything and there is absolutely no shame in owning that we don't know everything and reaching out to other people even if they're younger than us like I love talking to people that are younger than me that I, I can still give me something you know like I feel like every single person that I meet has something that they can teach me regardless of a you know, if they went to college or not, or if they're, if they run their own business or if they're homeless or if they're a millionaire, like, I don't care what your color is or your religion. Like everybody has something to teach me, even, even, and sometimes, especially people that I don't happen to agree with. Um, <laughs> well, you know, I, I, would, I remember my first mentor, she always laughed and said, Laura, you are always so willing to be wrong. <laughs> she said, you never fight me. Like, well, you know, if you're wrong, you're wrong. I'll be the first one to tell you. Right. So. You know, and what's right for one person isn't necessarily right for another person, which, no. is, which is great to like, look at that as well. And that's why it's so important to like honor people's stories, you know, and meet them where they are and be able to learn how to hold space for two people to disagree without being antagonistic, which I feel like is something that the horses 
really can help us with as well. Um, and during this time of so much political unrest and stuff with oh. COVID and the protests, it's just that much more important for us to try and create those safe cont containers where people can you know, go into that space and have disagreements, but feel seen and heard and understood and honored without necessarily having to come to an agreement on why. Yeah, right. And, you know, as coaches, I think we offer a lot of support to our clients. And so it's critical that we have support for us. You know, I keep a coach or, or three all the time, <laughs> all the time, because, you know, when you're growing, when you're on the grow, you're hitting the gas pedal, you need someone to keep pulling you forward because it can get overwhelming. You can get lost in the process, um, especially in a heated political environment. Uh, we're all isolated. So it's really critical. You know, I'm real quick to tell the helping professions, including coaching and consultants, have support for you. That is so important. Yeah, no, thank you so much for bringing that up because self-care is absolutely something that is important, not just for, for our bodies, but our minds and our spirits as well, you know, in our professional life. It's, it's the whole thing. <laughs> yes, it's the whole picture. The whole picture. Um, who would you say inspires you? Oh my gosh, that is a long list. You know, Melody Wood inspired me from the very beginning. She was my first coach and she introduced me to Thomas Leonard. And um, Thomas Leonard is, is now dead, but he was a brilliant, brilliant coach. And I still have some of his recordings uh, on tape upstairs. He actually helped form the ICF and, and was really like a leader early on in coaching. Uh, Bob Proctor is really uh, inspirational, his work and his, you know, what he does. Yeah. Uh, I love to listen to Allie Brown and Eleanor Beaton and Kendall Summerhawk and Blaine Bartlett. Um, all of those people inspire me. I've coached with some of them. And, uh, but, you know, really, Alicia, the horses inspire me if I'll just stop and listen. And my clients inspire me. I learn from my clients. Um, they always have great um, things to share in class or in sessions, you know, a great book or an idea. You know, any coach that says they don't learn from their clients, they're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> And aren't we there to help solve that problem for the people that we're engaging with? <laughs> <You're right. laughs> the irony. You can't learn it. You, we try really hard not to be hypocrites in life. It's, it's but you know, I'm an avid reader. I love Brene Brown's work. Um, I hear so much I, about that woman. Like, I really feel like I need to get her on the show. Yeah, right? I feel like we'd have a great time. Yeah. You know, there's always a good book out there. And Audible is a good thing. So, I you know, when I'm Audible. cleaning stalls or just out walking around the pasture, I love to have on a good book. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Is there anything, my friend, that you would like to promote regarding all the incredible things that you are doing over there with your team? Oh, gosh, yeah. Um, you know, we have horsebusinesswhisper.com, and we have a couple of, you know, I should say flagship programs. There's the growth and profits program. That's really for the person, you know, wanting to gain traction. We are launching, I'm giving away a secret here. We're launching the mission, vision, values lab. Yes. In September. That's exciting. And this is, you know, it's going to be a lab for um, people to really get that mission, their vision, their values really honed um, because it's important. And I think a lot of times that is just looked at and people go, Mission check, vision check, values check. Okay, next, you know. <laughs> you're, you're like, I have the list. I'm doing all the things. <laughs> and they're not stopping and making that the North Star. So right. uh, particularly when you're having to change step, like in COVID, those things are critical. Um, so, you know, we work a lot in the social marketing and business foundations as well in, on pricing. Oh, my gosh. And sales conversations, uh, packaging how to get your process together, your branding. Oh my gosh, we use the branding with archetypes method. Niching is critical in your messaging. And then, you know, pulling everything together on these electronic platforms, I bring on experts to show them how to get an email marketing system interfaced with landing pages and build out that sales funnel. Yeah, All no, of it's that great. Can be overwhelming and it doesn't have to be. 
It just doesn't have to be. I know I find technology overwhelming sometimes. It's really <laughs> oh, you froze again. I have just like a four minute video on my Facebook page of just me just being like Facebook Live. How do I make this thing work? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like you froze. Oh no. Oh, it says my internet connection is unstable. I'm sorry. Um, it's not just life in general. It's the internet. Um, I'm just having a goofy time. So you have these amazing programs happening. You're pulling in experts. Um, you do the live calls with your horses sometimes, or Katie's rather, one of your team members. Um, one of the things that I think is so cool about your program and how thoroughly connected you are is that in the past, we've talked about how sometimes the weather is just horrendous. Like Katie had a bunch of wind with the herd of horses and you're just like, no, it's not working. Or like, maybe it'll be raining. And so you can just pick up the phone and call somebody in your network that might be in like Texas or something. And they just are like, yeah, no, I can totally help you out. And so they grab their camera or whatever, and they go out to the field and they can live stream time with the horses on a zoom call while you're doing processing in Missouri and I mean like technology is amazing in that regard and I think it's a nice reminder for other professionals that are struggling that you can call on other people and you can network and you have can have technology put together that if for any reason you can't access your horses that day or um, a counselor for instance that you can just smush them all together from different places right Laura? Oh, yes. And that's been great, you know, having that network and those connections with people. And yes, that has happened. Katie had rain. So we called Joe McAlexander in Texas and he ran out with his camera. He was very gracious to do that for us. That's so, so awesome. you know, the thing that I'm looking forward to is hearing about the different ways to process virtually. Because yeah. we've been playing with about three different ways to do that in our live, you know, real sessions now in our uh, free online trainings. We're not doing a full blown session. We're just kind of sampling that out. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in the in the real sessions, we're playing with um, about three different ways to process on a virtual platform. I'm not real. My vote, you know, my jury's not in on picking one that I like the best. We're still playing with it. But I'll be interested to see what happens in the industry and who comes forward with you know this method of processing virtually. Yeah, I know that Veronica Lack at the Herd Institute has an online um, course that people can take on how to do the virtual work with horses, which I'm really excited to get to learn more about. Um, Veronica should be on the show at some point in the next month or so. Um, I'll look into that. That's great. I'm yeah, glad you told I'm, me that. You're very welcome. Yeah, I'm really excited to get to have her on. And tomorrow we will be having Nina Ekholm Fry on the show. Um, she's currently located in Colorado. I'm pretty sure she's still at the University of Denver. Yeah. Nice. Um, well, thank you so much for getting to be on here today. I'm sorry we couldn't have the horses, but I totally understand that weather happens. So no worries at all in that regard. And uh, it's always a pleasure getting to hang out and laugh with you. All right. Thank you, Alicia. It was my pleasure. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> oh, where? Oh, so it's not live anymore.